Well, hello, I'm Cassie. Uh, I really have no um, experience as far as coaching <laughs> other than last year, so I don't know how I wound up here, but uh, thank you guys for volunteering to serve. It's super sweet. Uh, we did have a blast last year. Janelle is my best friend. Uh, we actually met the one year that I did cheer in high school and uh, have been friends ever since, so that shows you what the sweet relationship is that can be built in the game, because it's, it is a sport, guys, so, uh, <laughs> convince me otherwise, uh, but we'll start in prayer, and then we'll, I'm just kind of the nuts and bolts as to how to run game day, how to run practice day, um, so we'll go through that, so we'll pray first. Uh, God, thank you for, uh, God, just for the program that you've allowed Calvary to kick off with this ministry, and um, thank you for the hearts to serve, for everybody taking their Saturday, uh, just to come spend it down here to love on these kids, um, learn how to serve them better, learn how to coach, learn how to um, just minister to them. So I thank you for the servant's hearts, God. I pray that you prepare us for uh, the season, that um, ultimately we be focused on you. It's easy to get distracted by the day-to-day -day activities and the routine of practice and things like that. So God, just pray that you continue to remind us that the whole reason behind it is uh, you and to draw the kids closer to you and to uh, teach them how to have a relationship with you, Lord. So I just pray that you bless it, um, that you're working through our hearts, and we just give the day to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so real quick, has anybody not coached before that's in here? Okay, a couple. Perfect. Okay. So, obviously, the main goal with this whole program is to teach the kids about the Lord. So, first and foremost, devotionals are going to be the main focus of every practice, um, and then praying with your girls at every game and things like that. So, that's going to be the main concern for everything that we're doing here. Uh, the manuals or the books that you guys got, your coaches' books, those have all the devotionals very clearly lined out for you, so it makes it super, super easy um, like Amber was saying, for the memory verses, they have little cards that you can hand out for your memory verses at practices and things like that. Uh, we didn't do this last year, but I would like to implement it this year since we have a longer time on the field at halftime. It was a really short, four minutes is hard to do a ton in, um, especially when you're trying to do snack at the same time. So uh, with the eight minutes, I think it's a great way to incorporate that in, is to have them recite their memory verse before they do their cheer or their dance or whatever little performance they're going to do at halftime. So as far as practice, uh, they've got a practice structure in there for you. They've got lots of uh, little like icebreaker type games, whether it's red light, green light, or um, we used to do drill motions things like that. Um, so they've got the practice pretty well lined out for you. The way that we did it is we did a 10 minute warm up where they're running around the field, they're stretching. I don't know if that I'm on that, but I'm going to read this. Uh, we're running around the field, doing a warm up, doing stretches for the first 10 minutes. We're going to do motions for the next 10 minutes. So that's one of the stations that we're going to have here. Uh, how many of you guys are coming back to help with orientation? Perfect. I love that. So we'll have a station outside where we can do motions. So um, we just run drills. And it's really teaching the girls how to be sharp in their motions uh, and how to position, like really position their bodies. So we're going to do low goal pulse, high goal pulse, T, broken T, all of the motions. And those are all lined out in the book as well on what those are. But we'll have somebody at that station going through motion drills for about 10 minutes, five, five to 10 minutes. Um, and then as far as station goes, we'll also have a station where we're going to teach them a really basic cheer, probably one of the easiest cheers that Upwards gives to us. That way they have something that they can go to their first practice on that they have already been familiarized with. Um, so back to practice structure, you do the motions. We're also going to do jumps and kicks. Um, watching a kindergarten try and do a kick is hilarious. Uh, so bear with them. Uh, I think we only have your team that are really older girls, and so everybody else, we're going to meet them where they're at. So uh, stretching is really important. It's going to help them with those motions, with those kicks and jumps and things like that. So being aware of what, pra what things you're going to be practicing, whether it's a toe touch or a star jump, things like that. Uh, so jumps, kicks, and then the next 10 minutes, you're going to review whatever cheers you taught them last week. Now, 
Upward is gonna give you all kinds of cheers that you can teach them. You can pick whatever you want. You can also go find your own cheers. We found some really fun ones on YouTube last year um, that the girls incorporated in that they loved. The ones that Upwards has, uh, some of them are kind of basic, which is great as far as a uh, skill level, but they get kind of repetitive and a little bit redundant and boring. And so if you guys want to go out and find other cheers online, you're welcome to do that. I will probably be uh, posting cheers like that that I find. I'll try and scour the internet, and I will post some cheers that I find uh, in the band app. After you review your previous cheers, you're going to teach your new cheers and whatever your new jump is for the next 10 minutes. So um, depending on how long the cheers are, so there's two different sections in the app. There are cheers and then there are chants. The chants are going to be way easier for your first couple of practices so that the girls get some skills under their belt and get some memorization under their belt. And then you can bust into the cheers. They're going to be a little bit longer, um, whether or not it's two eight counts, things like that. Uh, that's another thing that you're going to want to teach your girls. So we teach them how does a cheerleader count? How does a cheerleader clap? So there's things like that. We count in eight counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how the dance is going to be taught. It's a really easy way to teach the cheers. Um, and then how to clap. How to, you know, we do our clasp, clap. And those, that's the, so that the audience or whatever, the, um, all the parents and stuff on the field can hear it really, really well. Um, and then you're going to have a dance. So after you're done teaching your new cheer and going over your new jump, whether uh, there's dance that we're going to perform at halftime. I think, Eileen, you were practicing your dance during halftime throughout the season, right? Okay. So we should have started earlier. We will start earlier this year. <laughs> we will. Uh, last year, we... Uh, I think we got about halfway through the season teaching new cheers, and then we started teaching our dance. We're going to try and start teaching our dance, probably practice two, so in just four counts at a time that they can review and practice at home, and then that you guys can review at every practice for a short amount of time. We'll make it so that it's really smooth once you guys get to the final. You going to say something? <laughs> It's super entertaining. Um, go through those dances. Some of them are way easier than others. Uh, if it has a really fast pace, your kindergartners are not going to get it. So try and choose one that's got a nice, like, where every motion is at least a full count. Yeah. We're going to let you guys pick them this year. Yep. So, yes? No Britney Spears? No, no Britney Spears? So for the video, what Amber said was, if you, want, <laughs> if you want to do your dance to a worship song, you are more than welcome to choose a worship song. Please run it by Amber so that she can get the music ready for the day that you actually perform the dance at the end of the season. Uh, you can make up whatever dance you want, as long as it is honoring to the Lord and no Britney Spears. Did I get it? Perfect. Excellent. Uh, and then, so that is, our practices are 60 minutes, is that right? Yep, so that is 50 minutes worth of cheer, and then for the last 10 minutes, you're going to do your devotional. Um, I like to have the girls, if they're able to read, 
at least read the memory verse, then they all recite it together, uh, and then you can go through the devotional, hand out your memory verse cards, and then again, however you guys want to incorporate those, if you want to incorporate them on game day, uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, snacks for game day. I recommend reaching out to your parents at the very beginning of the season and being organized because every week last year we were like, hey, uh, anybody want to do it today? <laughs> so we were a little less organized. So just set up a cat and then we would have multiple people wanting to bring snacks on the same day. So set up a calendar at the very beginning of the season. Reach out to your parents, see who's available to bring snacks. You'll want those on game day. We did our snacks at halftime. Uh, you're welcome to do them at the end of the game. You're welcome to do that halftime. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. We, we had one mom that brought a full-on plastic sack of everything. We had like a full-size Gatorade bottle, a candy bar, a fruit roll, and they want to eat all of it and the four minutes that they have. So, uh, yes, ideas for what snacks are appropriate and reasonable for the short amount of time that we have to do snack time is a great idea. So for game day, uh, we start with the lineup right here in the courtyard. Like Amber said, she's going to have uh, a post that says which team stands where. Something that we did last year, which you're welcome to do, make it as fun for the girls as possible. So we got little stencils and face paint and we painted little stars on their cheeks. Uh, it's really easy to make body glitter. It's just aloe vera and glitter. Uh, so we made glitter for under their eyes and things like that. Whatever you can do to make it fun for the girls, um, you have free reign to do all of that. So line up here on the field. Like Amber said, they'll have the big tunnel. You're gonna go, the girls will stand with their palms and they will be an addition to the tunnel uh, for all the football players as they get called through. Amber will have a list of names for each cheer team and she's gonna call them in the same order every single time. So I recommend taking a picture of that list and lining your girls up in that order every single time. That way it's not confusing, they know exactly what order to go down the tunnel because that's when their name's being called. So we'll run down the tunnel. Uh, there you go, perfect. Yeah, so once the football teams go down the tunnel, we will go down the tunnel, uh, and then we'll head out to whichever field we're on. At that point, as the parents are uh, getting situated, you're already, hopefully you'll already have your dots out. If you don't have your dots out, get your dots out there. This will change your life, yes? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, cool. So we don't have to bounce back and forth anymore. Perfect. So what Amber said is that for field one and for field two, uh, the cheerleaders will stand in the spot that is closest to the fire lane that they did last year, and then we are not going to alternate back and forth like we did last year uh, because there's only going to be one team, so we'll just stay in those spots for the whole season. The dots, I would recommend assigning your cheerleaders a color dot and putting them out in the same order every single time. I think it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, I think there's all the colors of the rainbow, and there's two of each color. So if you just stagger them, uh, and that's the best way to do it. We've got 10 girls on each team, I think, or very, very close to, so just stagger those dots, and that way, if the girls know what color they are, they know exactly where to go stand. Uh, another thing that is really helpful is teaching them how to stand when they're not cheering, because otherwise they're picking the grass, and they're squatting like this, and they don't know what to do with their bodies. So pom-poms in hand, standing with their le legs like this, arms behind their back, pom-poms crossed. It looks clean, it just looks nice on the field, and then they aren't distracted by all of the things around them. Um, so your dots are up, you're gonna line up on your dots at the very beginning of the game. You're gonna wait for the coaches to come call you out to pray. Once you've prayed, then you're, the girls will run back, they're gonna get their palms, and then they're gonna rally up and down the field. That's one of the things that I think really gets the 
Parents engage, they're cheering, things like that. So if you have your girls with their palms, they just run up and down the sidelines one time, down and back. It's a good little warm up for them before they start cheering anyways. And it gets everybody awake and alert and knowing that the game's about to start. So after they've rallied, you can line them back up. Um, and then it's time to cheer. So one of the things that we did that, so back up. Cheerleaders, historically, are leaders, right? So they go out to school, they tend to be more, oh, they tend to be more um, that leader personality. They are peppy, they are boisterous, they are loud, uh, and people are drawn to them because they have that personality. When they're, we're dealing with them this little, they haven't grown that voice yet, so the goal in this is not only to teach them um, everything that we're teaching them about the Lord, but also to teach them self-confidence, to teach them um, how to be kind to one another because we don't want a bunch of mean girls going off into the world. So we teach them how to call their cheers. Each cheer will have a name. Teach them how to call it. So um, what was one of our cheer names last year? Take it to the goal. Okay, so whoever's calling it. And it was never the same girls twice. It was, you know, it was always... Anybody can call a cheer at any given time, whichever their favorite cheer was. So we would say, okay, somebody call it. And one of the girls would pop up, take it to the goal, ready? And then all the girls say, okay. And then that's the cue for them all to be ready. They know what cheer they're gonna do. Um, and they can all do it together and start at the same time. So teaching those girls to have that voice, pick their favorite cheer, call their favorite cheer, encouraging them in that. Um, another thing that I like to do during devotional is, um, give them homework to go home and be sweet girls to their family, to their friends. So I want you to go to school tomorrow and I want you to find somebody to give a compliment to. Hey, you did so good on your coloring. Hey, your dress is so cute today. Hey, I really like the way you did that. And then come back and tell us who you got to compliment and how did that make you feel? How do you think that made them feel? So that they're going out and they're encouraging people out in their daily lives as well. Um, but calling cheers throughout the game, uh, and then you've got halftime. So at halftime, like we said, I think it's a great idea to be reciting the memory verse. You can go out and you can do a cheer. You can go out and you can do part of your dance if you know your dance, or your full dance if you know your dance. Um, you guys can organize your halftime however you see fit, as long as you're doing some sort of rallying or performing during the halftime so that the parents have something to watch. Uh, I like to get the girls to get the people to call it out. Teach the girls how to get the people to do the wave. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do to get the crowd involved. That's the whole point of a cheerleader is to get the crowd excited about the game. Uh, and Really, I think that is it as far as the structure of practice and the structure of games. So do you guys have any questions about what to do on either for either of those practice or game days? We good? Okay, so for today for orientation, um, all of you guys are coming back. There's going to be a few different stations. The first station will be Amber. She's going to be doing check-in. The second station will be uniform sizing. So it'll just essentially be somebody standing there with the list of measurements for the different sizes and tapes to hand out to the parents and the parents will measure their kids to make sure that the um, uniform that they signed up for is the appropriate size. Then we're also going to have bow making. So we've got, last year, the bows were not exciting. And so this year we have, um, well, last year we made our own bows just because we're ridiculous. And so this year we thought it would be fun for the girls to make their own bows. So I pre-cut all of the ribbon, and so we'll have a station. I need two people at that station um, that are good with glue guns. So we will have, um, they get to pick their bow this year. There's lots of like little adornments. I bought jewels for them to glue on there. There's a jeweled ribbon to go around the middle section. Um, so they'll need help putting that together. And then they can pick whichever bow they want. There's three different colors. They can decorate it however they want. I think it's fun for them to be able to um, have control over that because it's just artsy and it's fun and it's creative. So it's a spot for them to go ahead and get their creativity out, but it's all matchy enough to where it'll match the uniform. They'll look matchy enough in their uniform together when they're out on the field. So I'll need two people for that station. 
Outside, we'll have a drill station where we're just going through motion drills and teaching them how to be sharp, teaching them how to hold their fists, um, all the different kind of technical things that they're going to need to know, and then that will feed into learning their first cheer. So if we could have two people at each of those stations as well, then we'll do that. Um, but other than that, that's it. I do not have people assigned to stations. So whoever feels crafty and is good with a glue gun, uh, that one's going to be probably the hardest one just because the material is fairly firm. And so you have to have strong fingers. The little girls aren't going to be able to do it on their own. Um, and then you kind of have to, Janelle struggled last year. <laughs> So essentially, the bow, you just fold it in half, squinch it together, put a zip tie around it, and tighten the zip tie. But while you're tightening the zip tie, you also have to hold the hair tie in place behind it so that it all gets tightened at the, same, at the right spot. So it's a little technical. So that part is a little, needs a little bit of structure and somebody who's good with their hands like that. Um, but then the decoration part, the kids are, can have fun with. So, uh, But I think two people will be good for that station because I do think that one's going to get backed up, and I can help with that as well. And then two people for drills, two people for um, cheer. So probably two people for cheer that did it last year would be helpful. I don't know if you guys want to do it. Um, since you guys probably already know that cheer, it'll be easy for you. Um, but yeah. Take it to the goal, yeah. I think that's probably the easiest one for all the little ones to learn too. Um, so other than that, we don't have to be back here until one. I know that she said this is going to take until 12.30, but I don't know who she thinks I am because I can't talk that long. So, you guys have any other questions or anything like that? We'll go and do a home. Yeah. So, and I, we set up a group text for all the parents so that I could do that last year. So, I recommend doing that as well. Amber's real good about getting people to get on the phone with them. I have three small kids at home, so I'm much better at texting than I am at calling. Uh, so if you want to set up a group text with all your parents, I think that does help a ton in communication. Um, and then they'll let you know who's going to be absent and things like that, keeping track of who's supposed to be there and who's not going to be there. So, um, but yeah, sending out the, the cheer video every week that you guys do is a great idea. You got anything else? No? All right. That's it. So. Sure. Yeah, well, okay, so I'm just going to do it now. So I'll put you two on the cheer. You want to do craft or motions? I'll do craft. Craft. Perfect. Craft. Uh, do you guys want to do motions? You can three are together, right? As three, perfect. And then I can help you with sizing if that works. Perfect. Okay. And then we'll jump in wherever, wherever needed. You're gonna have all of my kids and all of your kids. You're useless. I'll do it. <laughs> because she's terrible at the bows. It's true. It's true. Actually, I'll probably sit with you at the bow station then, because you're gonna need, I think, a second hand. Yep. Yep. I can do that. Do you want to do that before you leave, or do you want to do it when you come back? Okay, I'll grab some then. Okay, that's it, guys. That's all I have for you. Thank you for giving your Saturday morning.